In this lecture, we will learn how to space out elements on a web page. For example, we need some spacing between the logo and the website name. We need some spacing between the anchor tags. And we need some spacing around all of the elements and the border of the browser. So let's get started with adding some spacing to our elements. We can use display flex to do some quick spacing. There's a useful property of Flexbox called justify content, which allows you to set how your content is spaced out inside of a group. For example, you can use space between as one value option for justify content. So take a look at what's happened now. We have taken all of the available content and we have the available content we've put it on the outer borders so what this does is it takes all of the space available around the group and it puts it in between all of the elements in the group so now we have a lot of space between our logo and our company name we wanted space between the logo and the website name, but we didn't want that much. So how do we reduce the amount of space between the logo and the website name? Well, for that, we can set the width of this group. We can set the width of our logo and title group. So we can access that div logo and title, and we can set its width to something like 200 pixels. So take a look now. Now our logo and our website name, they are going to be of a static width, 200 pixels, and they have a little bit of space between. So I can increase this to 250 pixels. So now the entire width of the div is 250 pixels, and the space is larger because this justify content space between, it's going to take the space available, and it's going to put it between the elements in that group. Let's also set the width of our navigation. So I'm going to just add it to have the same width, 250 pixels. Okay, so now we can see that we have taken our elements, home, learn more, and product image, and we have set the width 250 pixels. So there is now more space for the whole group and then justify content space between is going to take all of the space and divide it evenly by all of the elements in the group. So let's say I wanted to give nav a separate width. Well, I can do that as well. I can set its width to something like 300 pixels. Okay, so this is going to set the width of nav to 300 pixels, which means there's more space available. So that space gets evenly separated between each of our anchor elements. If you change this to 350 pixels, now there's even more space that you can put in between each element because the whole width of this group is 350 pixels. So this is all of the available space. But by adding justify content space between, it takes that space from the end and it puts it in between each element in the group. So that is how you can set the width of different elements. And then if you set justify content space between, it will take whatever space is available in that width and it will put it between each of the elements in the group. So this is a great way, an easy way to apply spacing between elements thanks to display flex. So if you did not have display flex, then justify content wouldn't do anything. You have to have display flex there. Awesome. So we've already done some styling on our elements and you can find a good one that fits. It might also depend on how many links you actually have. So if you add another link, you might want to change the spacing depending on how much available browser space you have. Next, let's also apply some spacing around all of the elements, so around the body. Because currently in our body, we have our elements really close to the edge. So I am going to apply 
some spacing around all of these elements. So one option is to actually set the padding of the body itself, for example, to 20 pixels. This is going to put a 20 pixel padding around each side of the body. So now you can see that the elements of the page are going to have that extra padding. Another option is to add padding to individual elements as well. So if we remove padding from the body, we can apply padding to individual elements. For example, we could put padding on the header. Okay, so for that, we have to reference the header itself, and then we can give it a padding such as 20 pixels. All right, so this is going to put a 20 pixel padding around the header. And to differentiate what the header is, you can give it its own background color, such as 1D91C2, which is going to be a darker shade of blue. Okay, so here is an example of setting the background color of the heading. Now you may notice there's still a bit of space around the header, which you might not want. So in order to remove that, you can go to the body and you can set a margin to zero on the body. Typically you'll see the body and margin, the body's margin and padding will be zero as for convention, at least initially at the start, because you want to define some kind of margin and padding on your body. So if you don't have margin set on the body, then it will have this little space around all the elements. But if you do set margin to zero, it will remove that default margin. All right, and so that's why now we see we have a different background color for our header. And if I change this padding to 30 or even to 50, you can see this is going to affect the header. So padding refers to space inside of an element, whereas margin refers to space outside of an element. So if I set the margin to 50, that changes the space around the header. So this could be 10. But if I set padding, this affects the space inside of the element. You can also set padding individually on each side. You don't have to set 30 pixels to be the padding for all four sides. There's a lot of opportunity in styling. You can customize styling to make your elements look exactly as you want them. Let's also put some padding on our intro and main image. So that uses the ID intro and main image for that group. We can set its padding to 20 pixels as well. Or we could go even further and set it to 60 pixels. Okay, so now we have a lot more padding there. You can even set the padding to be 20 pixels, 60 pixels, which means 20 pixels for the top and bottom and 60 pixels for the left and right. There's tons of shorthands like that that you could implement. And again, if you don't want these scroll bars to appear, then you can just go to your body and set overflow to hidden. So now we won't have any scroll bars on the page. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.